Are you colorblind? Do you know one in 12 men and one in 200 women are affected by colorblindness? And you may be colorblind and not even know it. There are many different kinds of colorblindness. So how do you know if you're living with colorblindness? Hi, I'm Dr. Audrey Tai, a board-certified and fellowship-trained refractive and cataract surgeon, an ophthalmologist, and cornea specialist. And today I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about colorblindness. I think many of you will like to jump right into the test to see if you're colorblind. So we will do that first. Then I will explain how colorblindness works and how it is inherited and how it affects people and how it can be treated. So let's jump right into the test. The most common test for colorblindness is a test out of Japan. I think around the 1910s or so by Dr. Shinobu Ishihara of Tokyo University. There's several versions of the Ishihara test and the version that I will take you through today is the 14 plate version which is adequate to diagnose basic color blindness and a few of the more common variants. Some versions have fewer like 10 plates or some versions have more like 24 plates. The entire series consists of 38 plates. Plate number one. Everybody reads this one as 12. The first plate just helps the viewer understand how the test works. So if you can't read this plate, see your eye doctor right away. Something's definitely wrong. Plate number two. Normal subjects will read eight and those with red green deficiency reads three. Plate number three. Normal subjects will read five and those with red green deficiencies two. Plate number four. Normal subjects will read 29 and those with red green deficiencies 70. Plate number 5. Normal subjects will read 74 and those with red green deficiencies 21. Plate number 6. Clearly 7 for normal subjects but hard to read for those with red green deficiencies. Plate number 7. Clearly 45 for normal subjects but hard to read for those with red green deficiencies. Number 8. Clearly two for normal subjects, but obscure for those with red green of deficiencies. Number nine. Normal subjects can hardly read it, but most of those with red green deficiencies see the figure two in it. Number 10. Normal subjects can usually read the figures 16, but most of those with red green deficiencies cannot. Number 11. In tracing the winding line between the two X, the normal trace the bluish green line. The majority of those with color vision deficiencies are unable to follow the line. So how did you do? If you had trouble reading any of the plates correctly, let your eye doctor know right away. You may need additional testing. There are actually three more plates to this test, which we will talk about at the end because they will make more sense after I explain a little bit about how color blindness works. So how does color blindness work? Well, First, let's talk about how it doesn't work. Color blindness isn't blindness at all. It is actually a slight deficiency of color vision, or in rare cases, a more significant deficiency of color vision, but really doesn't have anything to do with being blind. Also, many people believe that people who are colorblind seeing black and white. This is mostly not true. Although there's one rare type of color blindness that is monochromatic or black and white but most people who are colorblind see most colors and just have issues with certain shades. You may have heard that your eye has structures in it called rods and cones, and it is the cones which detect color. There are three types of cones for color detection, which are named for the wavelength of color they detect. The cone that detects short wavelengths of light, such as blue, is called S-cone. As for short, the cone that detects medium wavelengths of light such as green is called M cone, M for medium. And the cone which detects long wavelengths of light such as red is called the L cone, L for long. When light hits the cones, your brain uses the differences between the two cones to determine what color it is looking at. When light enters the eye, it stimulates each cone based on its wavelength. For example, let's say your L cone receives 82 units of light and your M cone receives 183 units of light and your S cone receives 59 units of light. Brain can determine from the differences in stimulation between the cones that is looking at the color green. When all three cones work correctly, that is called trichromacy. The most common type of color blindness is called 
anomalous trichromacy, where all three cones work to some degree, but one of the cones is impaired. People with a deficient L cone, remember that is the cone detects mostly red, have their L cone detection spectrum shifted towards the M cone. As a result, when incoming light is detected, the difference in signal between the L and the M cone is much smaller than it should be, which makes it more difficult for the brain to determine the exact color. A deficient L cone is called proteanomaly. As you can see, a deficient L cone will make it difficult to see green correctly. They might be, for example, see green as orange, but it will not cause any problem seeing orange. You will still see orange as orange. This is why a person with red-green color blindness cannot simply memorize the orange color of grass or a traffic light and learn to call it green because both orange and green objects will appear orange to them. The opposite situation where the M cone is deficient and its detection spectrum is shifted towards the L cone is called deuter anomaly. Both proteanomaly and deuter anomaly result in the most common type of colorblindness, which is called red-green colorblindness. A deficient S cone is much more rare, but it's possible, and people who have that struggle with blue and yellow instead of red and green. Now, those are the most common types of colorblindness, anomalous trichromacy. But what if an entire cone is just missing? This does occur and is called proteanopia if the L cone is missing, deuteranopia if the M cone is missing, and tritanopia if the S cone is missing. In that case, an entire range of colors will not be able to be seen by the brain. This is called dichromacy. And you may have heard people say that dogs are colorblind or they only see in black and white. That is not quite correct. Dogs are dichromats and they do not only see in black and white, but they only have two cones. And as a result, they can see a smaller range of colors than humans. One of their cones is tuned more towards short wavelengths and one more towards medium wavelengths. Because of their cones, configuration, dogs cannot see red or green very well at all, but they can see yellow and brown and have a high sensitivity in their blue and purple detection. This image shows a full RGB spectrum and how the same colors would be perceived by a dog. They perceive blues and purples better than humans and can even see slightly into the ultraviolet wavelength spectrum, something that humans cannot do. If only one cone is present, or functional, then no colors can be determined at all and that person would see in black and white. This is called monochromacy. Fortunately, this is very rare to have two of the three cones not working. So I promised I would return to the last three plates in the Ishihara test. Well, here they are. Plate number 12, normal subjects and those with mild red-green deficiencies see the figures 35, but those with a missing or strongly deficient L cone, proteanopia, and strong prot Anomalia will see the five only, and those with a missing or strongly deficient M cone, deuteranopia, and a strong deuteranomalia will only see three. Plate number 13, normal subjects and those with mild red-green deficiencies see the figures 96, but those with a missing or strongly deficient L cone, proteanopia, and the strong proteanomalia will see the six only. And those with a missing strongly deficient M cone, deuteranopia, and the strong deuteranomalia will only see the nine. Plate number 14, in tracing the winding lines between the two axes, the normal trace along the purple and red lines. In proteanopia and the strong proteanomalia, only the purple lines traced. And in case of mild proteanomalia, Anomalia, both lines are traced, but the purple line is easier to follow. In deuter anopia and the strong deuter anomalia, only the red lines traced. And in case of mild deuter anomalia, both lines are traced, but the red line is easier to follow. So why are some people colorblind and some people not? Occasionally, color vision deficiency can happen because an injury to the retina, the light sensitive layer of tissue in the back of the eye that contains the combs, the optic nerve which connects the eye to the brain or the brain itself, such as a retinal detachment or brain tumor. But most of the time, color vision deficiency is genetic, meaning they're passed down from your parents. In the simplest terms, color blindness is recessive gene carried on the X chromosome. Recessive means that in order to be colorblind, all of your X chromosomes need to carry the recessive gene. Have you ever heard the myth that women cannot be colorblind? This is not true, but it is true that far less women are colorblind than men. The reason for that is that females have two X chromosomes and males only have one. Females receive their father's X chromosome 
and one X chromosome from their mother, and both of them need to have the recessive gene for her to be colorblind. Males receive their father's Y chromosome and one X chromosome from their mother. If that X chromosome from their mother has the recessive gene, then he will be colorblind. So to give some examples, if a colorblind man has children with a woman who is not colorblind and not a carrier for the colorblindness gene, then none of the children will be colorblind and all of their daughters will be carriers. If one of those daughters who carries one copy of the recessive gene for colorblindness has children with a non-colorblind man, then their male children will have a 50% chance of being colorblind, and none of their daughters will be colorblind, but they will all have a 50% chance of being a carrier like their mother. And finally, if a colorblind woman has children with a normal seeing man, all of the male children will be colorblind, and all of their female children will be carriers, but none will be colorblind. So, can you treat color blindness? There is no cure for color vision deficiency that is passed down from parents to children, but most people adjust to living with it just fine. Some people use special glasses or contact lenses that can help them tell the difference between colors. The special lenses work by increasing the contrast between colors, so they are easier to tell apart. Those use apps that let them take photos with a phone or tablet and then tap on the part of the photo to find out what color it is. It is easy to imagine that in the future, apps will be integrated into glasses-based devices like the Apple Vision Pro that will help those with color vision deficiency see colors more clearly and easily. Stay tuned for a future video about how Apple Vision Pro can help people with vision impairment. If you have learned something new, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel to support more informative content on eye health and surgery. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Dr. Audrey Tai to learn more about my practice. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video.